Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Connor, back again with another episode of the Top Level Sports Podcast. Once again, alongside me this week is Michael Lyon, who really should be thanking me right about now for his Lions even being in the playoffs. What's up, Michael? That's actually true. Thank you, Connor. Happy yep. to be here. Yep. <laughs> thank, thank you for your giants. Yeah, I mean, we kind of we kind of help each other out a little bit mm-hmm. uh, by beating the Lions in Week 15. The Giants, you know, basically clinched their spot in the playoffs. They got up to like 99% odds, and then of course they eventually make it. Uh, and then the Lions lose out, lose their last three games <laughs> after a nine and four start, and then you know they end up relying on the uh, Giants to beat the Redskins for them to get their wild card spot. We had complete control of our own destiny, and we ended up relying on luck, and we still got it. Yeah, we let it completely <laughs> slip away. Uh, but you know, doesn't really matter now. Giants and the Lions are the two wild card teams in the NFC, so we're both happy. Yep. We're both in the playoffs. Uh, playoffs are starting this week. It's the uh, wild card weekend coming up, and we're going to give our picks for the four games. We're going to do them in order of the, the uh, order that the four games will be played in. The first game, it's going to be 4.35 Eastern time on Saturday, where the number four Texans, entering the game with a 9-7 and seven record, will be facing off against the number five Raiders, who entered 12-4, and four, but really both teams are without the quarterbacks they wanted to use in this game. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And uh, how I wonder how this works for the confidence of Brock Osweiler, who played horrible all season long, got benched, and then his replacement got injured, and they're reluctantly throwing him back in there. Yeah, I mean, uh, and not not only does he is he played horrible all season long, but now he knows that the team doesn't even trust him, and he's going against the twelve and four uh, uh, Raiders that have been lights out this season, and they do have Matt McGloin, Derek Carr is out. Uh, but they still have a lot of weapons on offense, and I like their defense as well. I pick the, yeah. I'm picking the Raiders to win yeah. the game. Uh, I'm going to go against you on this one. Actually, Matt mcgloin has been ruled out for the game. It'll be the third stringer, Connor Cook, playing again. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see. A third stringer. He's the first quarterback uh, since the AFL-NFL merger who has had his first career start coming to playoff game. So that's going to be really interesting. Connor Cook uh, from Michigan State in college. You know, backed up Matt McGloin, had a decent game. Uh, I mean, numbers-wise, it was okay. It was probably right about what you'd expect for, like, a third stringer entering the game. But he actually played better than McGloin uh, in their game against the Broncos. I mean, really, Brock Osweiler, sure, his confidence might be down. But this has to be a dream scenario for the Texans. You know, you're the four seed, and, you know, just a week ago, you're thinking you're almost doomed because you're going to go up against either the Chiefs or the Raiders, and they're both, you know, much better than the Texans. But then all of a sudden, you're up against a third-string quarterback. Yeah. Uh, well, I think what it was evident from the last game of the season against, as against the Broncos is that Connor Cook and Matt McGloin are replaceable. Uh, or at least they're going to give you a relatively the same. That being said, the Raiders' offense did nothing against yeah. the Broncos. So I, mean, I think what we really uh, learned is this it was is Derek a, Carr's team. It was a struggle. Yeah, Derek Carr is, uh, was obviously a vital piece of that offense. But um, if you look at the leadership on that defense uh, with, with Mack leading the way, um, I, I think their defense has showed up all season long. Um, Amari Cooper is is good. Um, yeah. eight, one of the best receivers mm-hmm. in the league. Uh, they they've shown variety when it comes to their running game. Uh, Murray was like the running back going into the season, and they've had talent show up yeah. with Jalen Richard and, and and Washington as well. So uh, I, I like. They still have weapons on offense. Uh, they still have a good defense. The defense, I think, can completely shut down the Texans, uh, led by Brock Osweiler. He's shown. He's given me no reason to have any faith in him whatsoever this year. Okay, but then you're still asking. You're you're still putting more faith, you know, in a third string quarterback in his first ever start. You know, going up against the Texans. You know, Texans are a really good defense. I I think. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this game's not going to have a lot of points in it. Can you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the last time these guys played, they actually played in Mexico in Week 11. The Raiders won 27-20. I don't think we're even going to get near that high. I think, I mean... We might get 27 combined. 27 combined. I mean, I yeah, it's going to be something like a 17-10 kind of game. Uh, reminiscent of, I think, a lot of the games the Texans have played this season. I mean, the Raiders... The Raiders played in a lot of shootouts where they just really relied on Derek Carr to just, you know, come through and, you know, fourth quarter come back it or, you know, just have an, an amazing performance that put him in the MVP conversation for, you know, the majority of the season up until like the last few weeks or so. But, you know, overall, you know, I think Brock Osweiler, he has the experience. We've obviously shown he's turnover prone. You know, the Texan offense is pretty weak overall. 
But you look at the Raiders, I mean, it's a team that's thrown up like almost 30 points every single week of the season. Without Derek Carr, they only score six. They're up, they're on the road. I think that should not be understated. You know, they're playing the Texans defense. And the Texans are a team that they don't really need a lot from their offense to be able to win games. They get a couple turnovers. Uh, you know, they shut down the opposing team. You know, even, you know, they still have weapons. The Raiders still have weapons. Amari Cooper, you know, uh, Crabtree, the whole receivers are great. But if you don't have the same kind of quarterback throwing it to them, and I think they're going to have to be a lot more cautious with Connor Cook, uh, I think the Texans are going to win this game. Again, I would say something like 17-10, 17-13, 14-13, but... I'm going to go with the Texans on this one. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with the Raiders. Uh, I think they're explosive. Uh, they've shown uh, lot, lots of like 30-plus yard runs from their running game this year. Uh, their running backs are explosive. Amari Cooper is explosive. I think they just need two or three big plays, I mean, and, and they can... I mean, still, I would the argue game. the only reason the running, the running game has been so effective is because they've had that balance. And I think without Derek Carr, they're going to have to try to rely more on the running game but I think, obviously, knowing that the Texans will, you know, put more men in the box, and I think they'll be able to shut things down more. Uh, Low-scoring game. I think, I mean, you're picking the Raiders, and I'm picking the Texans. We can agree on two things. Again, already, the score's going to be low. Second thing we can agree on, uh, the winner of this game will not beat the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. All right. I mean, technically, I think, you know, may- maybe McGloin's back for that game. <laughs> maybe Tom Savage is back for that game. But no, they don't no, stand a chance, even the if they are back. Yeah. Uh, the second game, the uh, other Saturday game, the night game, is your team, the Lions, and started 9-4, and four, lost their last three, and now to top it off, traveling into Seattle, the three seed in this game. It looks to be a really tough one for the Lions. You think you can pull it out? Um, it hurts, but I've got to pick Seattle in, in this game. And um, I mean, playoff experience, Super Bowl experience from Russell Wilson, a, a lot of that defense. Um, they've, they've looked bad this year. The Seahawks have looked bad this year a lot. They put up five points against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yep. And um, they're... So, I, I mean, it could be closer than people think, but it does not look good for the Lions, who have lost three straight. Their defense has been weak and struggling. Um, the offense hasn't even had a chance to get those fourth-quarter comebacks yeah. that they've been famous for. The, so the Seahawks, the Seahawks this season, and one of the primary reasons someone would think the Lions would have a chance, they've just been wildly inconsistent. Again, you were mentioning earlier with the five points against the Bucks. You know, they play games, you know, Against the Cardinals this season, they had a, a 3-3 tie, mm-hmm. or a 6-6 tie, I believe it was. Um, and then they lost another game to the Cardinals. They lost to the Rams earlier on in the season. They barely beat the Dolphins early on in the season when the Dolphins were one of the league's worst, worst teams. You know, they got killed by the Packers. Mm-hmm. So a lot of bad performances from the Seahawks. But then again, you know, a Super Bowl team led by Russell Wilson, you know, they won their division easily, and they still had a lot of great performances. We forget they're the only team that beat Tom Brady with, or they beat the Patriots while they had Tom Brady. So the Seahawks, and they're still uh, maybe not the home field advantage that we've seen in years past, but they've still been 7-1 and one at home this season. Uh, so I think, you know, obviously some teams are going to turn it on the playoffs. I think the Seahawks know what they have to do. I think the Lions are going to struggle to get any kind of run game going. I think Theo Riddick is a huge loss for the Lions because that, you know, a versatile in the running game, in the receiving game, you know, he's more of a, you think of Theo Riddick more as a pass catching back, but he was actually the Lions' number one leading rusher on the season because the Lions had like three guys with like 300, 400 yards. Yeah, you know? I think that says more about their lack of a dominant running back on the ground. Yeah. Uh, I think what this game comes down to is the Lions are known as a team that can beat the bad teams and lose to the good teams. So if the C- the Seahawks have been inconsistent, if they show up at all, they're gonna they're probably gonna win the game, yeah. and they can. Everyone knows that they're capable of winning. Russell Wilson has proven that he he can be clutch. He can be he can come through when he's needed, and um, I, we have no indication that they won't show up to this game. Yeah, and I think the problem again is gonna be with the one dimensionality the Lions it's all going to go on uh, Matt Stafford's shoulders and it's just going to be really tough for him because I mean Seahawks I mean I mean still look at the defense it's a good defense they've lost some players sure I mean, but still look at the defense you know uh, you know they're going to be shut down 
you know, Golden Tate, you know, going to be shut down by Richard Sherman, and all of a sudden, you know, who are you going to throw to? You know, Eric Ebron? Like, <laughs> congratulations. Try winning a game against the Seahawks with Eric Ebron this year. I think what the Lions just have to do is hope it's a one-possession game going into the fourth quarter and yeah. they can pull I mean, out a drive. Yeah, I the Seahawks' there. offense has definitely struggled at times. So the Lions' defense is going to have to have one of its best games of the season, yeah. a game similar to the one they had against the Giants. The only problem with that is the offense didn't show up. At all. So yeah. it could end up being a very similar game to the game they played against the Giants where they're just, you know, they play well and shutting the other team down for the majority of the game, but, you know, they can't really put points on the board. Yeah, this could go one of two ways. We could see a low-scoring game that the Lions have a prayer at pulling out a fourth-quarter comeback for, or it could be a blowout in the Seahawks' favor in which their offense fires on all cylinders, which, yeah. honestly, I think that's more likely. It's more the case. I'm thinking for a score, I'm thinking something on the lines like 30-17. to 17. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. All right. So those are the two Saturday games. Uh, moving on to the Sunday games, we get the other matchup in the AFC. Uh, it's going to be the Steelers riding a seven-game win streak into this game and hosting the number six seed Dolphins. Um, the Steelers actually lost the Dolphins 30-15 earlier on in the season in the first game where J.H.I. really broke out for over 200 yards rushing. Uh, did the Dolphins have a chance at repeating that performance? Uh, I don't think a lot of people give the Dolphins a chance in this game, and I'm not one of them. Uh, the Steelers, are they're on a roll. They're playing the best football all season right now. Uh, their offense is finally coming together the way many people thought it could. Um, the Dolphins without Ryan Tannehill, uh, playing with Matt Moore, who's, who's done all right when, when he's filled in, but um, not enough to compete with Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown. Yeah. Definitely, and I think a lot of people thought there was a chance that Ryan Tannehill would be able to return for this game, but he is out. He might be available if the Dolphins move on, but that's going to be a very tough task, uh, you know, simply because, you know, these last couple of games, the Dolphins have struggled a bit. They played one of the most exciting to watch games of the season against the Bills, but overall not one of their best team performances. And then, you know, they got crushed by week seven in Week 17 against the Patriots, like most teams do when they go into New England. So I don't think the confidence has to be very high. And they're also playing, you know, one of the strongest teams in the league, one of the best teams in the league, finished number four in my power rankings. Uh, nice little uh, reference to my power rankings. <laughs> Toplevelsports.net for the full website. And obviously a really high-powered offense that the Steelers have. And it's going to be really tough for the Dolphins to slow them down. Yeah, they're going into Pittsburgh against a hot team, strong offense. Uh, I don't see how they do it. Ben Roethlisberger, obviously a very seasoned veteran quarterback, a lot of postseason experience. I think one of the main things to watch here is going to be time of possession. I think Ajay Ajay, obviously, is going to have to have a breakout game. Right. Matt Moore is going to have to play definitely well enough to convert some third downs, keep some drives sustained. If they can't do that, especially if early on the Dolphins have a couple three and outs and the Steelers are able to go on these really long drives and put points on the board, I think the Steelers will definitely be able to take it over early. Um, I'm thinking something like 27-20 for the Steelers would be my guess. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go with 24-10 Pittsburgh. Okay. I don't see Miami's offense doing a whole lot. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, again, they ha still have some weapons. Uh, you know, Jarvis Landry, a beast. You know, Kenny Stills, Jay Jai, can they get them all going at once? Can they make some of those big plays that you need to make to win playoff games? They know they aren't the best team in the matchup. Uh, but, you know, they got to find a way to psych themselves up. And, you know, really all it takes, you know, if the defense somehow pulls off, you know, something crazy, defensive touchdown, return touchdown. In playoff games, one or two plays really do have the ability to switch the whole tide of the game. Do the Dolphins have it in them? I mean, sure, they probably do. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think the Steelers win the game. And they don't have a lot of experience either. Yeah. I think that's important. Uh, Matt Moore. Uh, yeah, rookie it, head coach, Adam Gase. Right. It's going to be big for him. Uh, Steelers will win the game. Yeah, agreed. All right, another rookie head coach making his first playoffs <laughs> appearance, playing against his former team where he was the quarterback's coach and offensive coordinator, uh, Ben McAdoo and the Giants, my team. Going against one of the, another one of the hottest teams in the league, won six straight Green yeah. Bay Packers. 
I, I definitely think the NFL saved the best for last. Can you agree? This is going to be the most intriguing. <laughs> this is, yes, matchup. yeah. This is definitely this the is hardest really, matchup to pick. This um, is a really good matchup. It's on gonna paper. be a good game. We've all seen what Eli Manning can do in the playoffs. It's good. It's impressive. We've all seen Aaron Rodgers win a Super Bowl of his own. Very impressive. Uh, two se- two seasoned good quarterbacks. I mean, I'd give Aaron Rodgers the edge sure. at, at quarterbacking. Uh, Eli probably has an edge when it comes to pieces around him on offense. Eli's got the clutch factor. <laughs> he also has the clutch back. Aaron Rodgers has the relaxed back. <laughs> Who and, really knows? And, and, and the Giants have a better defense. I'll give them that. Their defense has been lights out at the end of the season. Um, they, they shut down the the, the Cowboys. The and Cowboys. I was thinking, okay, the Cowboys offense had a bad game. Yep. Next game, they hold Detroit to six, and they close out the season holding the Redskins to ten. Yeah. So lots of credit there. Uh, that's impressive. And the NFL has been trending towards higher scoring games. Yeah. Uh, the Giants have been winning games in unconventional ways. Eli Manning is still definitely the leader of the team, the emotional leader, the locker room guy. Um, but he really has been, you know, I mean, Eli Manning, to be honest, his regular season numbers have never been stellar in any year of his career. He's always been one of those top 10 quarterbacks, but never really an elite MVP candidate. This year, he's taken a bit of a step down. Uh, I think not all of it is his fault, definitely. There's been some drops. There's been some, you know, issues with the offensive line, especially, Um, you know, my great friend Eric Flowers with a holding penalty, you know, in every big play the Giants have all season long. Uh, so the, the responsibility for the Giants has really rested a lot more on the defense. And a lot's been made of the free agent signings, uh, especially, you know, Dominique Rogers, Cromartie, you know, Olivier Vernon getting in that pass rush alongside Jason Pierre-Paul. But the real star of the show for me is Damon Snacks Harrison. <laughs> Snacks, I mean, here's just a crazy stat to tell you about the impact that Snacks has, especially in the run stopping and just, you know, being a leader of a great defense. Last season, the Giants had a, had a bottom five scoring defense, and the Jets had a top five scoring defense when Damon Harrison played for the Jets. Harrison moves to the Giants. The Giants have the number two scoring defense in the league, and the Jets are now all of a sudden bottom five. You know, Damon Harrison, he, he just swallows guys up in the middle. You can't get past him. The whole Giants as a team have a great defense. Uh, but again, it's a really tough matchup. In Lambeau, the Giants had to go in Lambeau and win in both of their last two Super Bowl uh, Super Bowl trips in 2007 and 2011. Who's your pick for the game? I got to go with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, look at what Aaron... I know the Giants' defense is good. There's no question about that. But they've been winning games, scoring you know 10 to 20 points. Yeah. I mean, it's not like their offense has been lights out. I mean, Giants and, have not scored 30 points in a game this season, which is a crazy stat for and an 11-win ag- team. Right. And against Aaron Rodgers, who's playing some of the best football of his career right now, I don't realistically see the Packers being held to under 20 points. Uh, he's he's playing too good. Six-game win streak. Uh, they put up 23 at week five against the Giants, and, and that was when the Packers were having a whole bunch of trouble. They weren't even... That was like their running back crisis. Yeah. So they don't know what was going on All there. All of a sudden, and, they threw Ty yeah. Montgomery in to see what <laughs> Ty, happens. Ty Montgomery has been a pleasant surprise. I think close to six yards per carry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think they have a little bit figured out there. Um, everything's go. They're firing on all cylinders right now, and I gotta go with them to win the game. I'm happy you mentioned the first time these guys played. It was a 23, 23 to sixteen win for the Packers at home in Week Five. Uh, after that game was really the turning point in the Giants' season. Coming off that game, the Packers. I mean, they still had questions about their offense with injuries, but that was a four and one team at that point. The Giants were two and three. After that game, the Giants, especially their defense, really figured things out. You know, they got together. They go on a six-game win streak. They win nine of their last 11. So the Giants' defense has definitely come on stronger than that. I do see the Giants, obviously they're not going to have one of their sh- complete shutdown performances where the, you know, the Cowboys score seven or the, you know, the Lions score six. I think the Packers are going to be slowed down a little bit. Even though the Giants were not at their best in Week 5, they still um, allowed Aaron Rodgers to have his lowest passer rating in a game on the season, a pass rating of just 65 for a guy that's you know, regularly 100-plus. Um, so I think the Giants defense will be able to hold the Packers like roughly 20 points, maybe 20 to 24 is that range. I think a lot of it's going to come on Eli Manning. Can he get things together? Uh, I'm going to pick the Packers in the game, just like you, you know, it hates me to do it. It hates me to go against my favorite team. Really the, 
you know, my favorite team in all of sports, the only team I really support with that, you know, diehard passion. Uh, but I do think even if the Packers aren't putting points on the board, I think they're going to have the ball a lot, a lot of these long drives. The Giants have great defensive efficiency in the red zone. Maybe Packers, you know, put on three, four field goals, but they're still going to have the ball for a long time. They're going to be tiring guys out, moving the ball down the field. And I think the Giants play in a lot of these games where there's a lot of long drives, you know, not very many possessions total in the game. And I think the Packers are going to be able to give their defense a lot of time to recover. The defense is going to have a lot of time to rest. Uh, and then when they get on the field, I think they're going to do a better j- – it's it's tough to say. I think they're going to do a decent job of slowing down Eli Manning, but a decent job is all it's really going to take because unless you know the Giants really do go into their January-February Super Bowl mode, it's been a really lackluster offense. So I'm thinking something like 23-17, which would be almost an ide- identical score to the last game. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go 24-14. Yeah, I mean, very similar game in terms of score to the last time these guys played. I think the Giants' defense is a little better, but I think at the same time, Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. I mean, great quarterback. There's only so much you can do. The Giants are going to make some plays. You know, the Giants are going to find a way to get a couple turnovers in this game. You think it's, you know, crazy. I mean, the Giants picked off Aaron Rodgers twice in the last game, but overall, the Packers are still the stronger team just because they got one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Right. You know, Aaron Rodgers is a guy that's very tough to be stopped. He put himself in the MVP conversation, which I mean, we'll get to definitely. later. I'm, I'm going to be rooting for the Giants. I think it could be close. I would love, what I would love is to get into a situation, you know, similar to like the previous Super Bowl runs. Packers up 2017, give Eli the ball in two minutes, just see what happens. I think the Giants would. I think the Giants would take that scenario yeah, I, right now. They'll be rooting for that scenario. I would love we'll, Eli Manning we'll to a chance to do it at the end. I think if he does, who knows? Eli Manning, you know, one of the most inconsistent quarterbacks in the league. He's bad, but then he's great. You know, then he's bad. And you're yeah. like, why'd you throw that ball, Eli? Why'd you throw the ball? The Giants are capable. We'll, just, we'll see if they can put it. And together. a key factor could be Paul Perkins, running back from the Giants. You know, started off the season in a huge committee with Rashad Jennings, Shane Vereen, uh, Bobby Rainey. Bobby Rainey is no longer, you know, no longer in the picture whatsoever. Uh, Shane Vereen's on the IR. Rashad Jennings has been replaced by Bobby Rainey or Bobby Rainey, Paul Perkins, who went over a hundred yards in a game uh, last week. It was the first time an individual Giants rusher had a hundred yards in the game this season. It was Paul Perkins' career high, of course, the rookie. If he can allow the Giants to get things going on the ground where they've definitely struggled and forced Eli Manning to have to do maybe even too much in the passing game and allow Eli Manning to have that time to sit back and make his reads and maybe hit a couple deep throws. It could change the game. I think, obviously, up in the air, I'm going to give the slight edge to the Packers. Right. So just to recap our wild card predictions, uh, our only difference came in the first game where you like the Raiders and I like the Texans. Right. And we're both picking the Seahawks to beat the Lions. Uh, although, who knows? Zach Zenner could go <laughs> off. Matthew Stafford could come in clutch. We'll, we'll need the no, fourth quarter. I think, I think Richard Sherman's going to have some things to say after this game. <laughs> uh, Steelers are going to take care of the Dolphins with just an overwhelming offense. Yeah. And then Giants-Packers will be a great game to watch. But sadly, the Packers do have the edge in this one. Yes. All right. So there's our wild card picks. Before we wrap up the show... We're going to get into the MVP race. Uh, it was a topic we covered, you know, our last podcast a few weeks back. Uh, at that point in time, you know, there were a lot of guys that could have been in the MVP race. We had uh, Brady and Matt Ryan and Ezekiel Elliott. We also had guys like Dak, uh, Dak Prescott, Matthew Stafford, Derek Carr, all of them kind of due to injuries or the team having poor performances kind of fell out of the picture later in the season. Uh, but then we also had the emergence of Aaron Rodgers. Uh, right. When we did this a couple weeks ago, you said the MVP should be Tom Brady. Is that still your opinion? I was all on the Tom Brady bandwagon, and I'm off it now because things have changed. I, I thought the... I did not expect... Not only have the Falcons won their last three games, they have scored 30-plus points in every single one of them. Matt Ryan has been lights out. My argument for Tom Brady was that he was playing the best football 
in the league, best quarterback in the league by a lot. And he should be the MVP because he was clearly playing on a different level than everyone else. Right now, that's not true. He has a, he, by five points, he has a worse quarterback rating than yep. Matt Ryan. Uh, I mean, yards per game, similar. Um, t- Matt Ryan has a good 38 to 7 touchdown to interception yeah, ratio. Tom Brady did set an NFL record with his 28 to 2 ratio. But at the same time, you're talking about a guy that only played 12 games in the season. And I think the important thing, if you're considering giving an MVP to a guy that missed four games, is is there anyone that put up you know, even a comparable performance? Because if there's a guy that put up similar numbers but just played more games, then that guy obviously should get the MVP. I think Matt Ryan definitely means more to the Falcons than Tom Brady means to the Patriots. You saw that with Jimmy Garoppolo's play. I don't think it's really fair right. to bring in the Jacoby Brissett games. <laughs> But, you know, the Patriots' backup quarterback was able to lead them to some impressive wins, even though Tom Brady is, you know, possibly the GOAT. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Matt Ryan really leading the offense. Uh, one of the top five seasons all time in terms of passer rating. Nearly 5,000 yards. Uh, I think last time when we had this conversation, the Falcons were, you know, were an 8-5 and five team on the bubble of even if they were going to win their division. But now they got a first-round bye. They're the two-seed. Uh, and the defense has not been spectacular really by any means. Right. It's just they're putting up 30 points. They're putting up 40 points like in five games this season. Uh, just an unstoppable offense really. And I think I mean, you'd have to say the Falcons are the best offense in the league. Right. I right. know Tom Brady is running the Patriots. Based on the, the outstanding and uh, un- re- remarkable performance in the last three games, you have to – put Matt Ryan above Tom Brady. I, a lot of the experts have been trending that way. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, just because you can say they're playing, at the very least, comparably right mm-hmm. right now. And I don't think you could say that three weeks ago, but I think you can say it now. And, and the, the four, Tom Brady missing the four games, I think that puts Matt Ryan ahead. Yeah. And I'll give him the edge. Yeah, I mean, just in terms of performance, you know, the best quarterback this season... I would have to say it's Matt Ryan if you're looking at all the stats and all everything he's been able to do with the Falcons. I think one of the arguments you made last time was it's about who can contribute more wins to the team. And I think now as an 11 win team, I, most of that's Matt Ryan. I mean, you throw I mean, you throw an average quarterback on the Falcons and, you know, 8 and 8 at best, I would say. Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan has showed that he can lead them to a worse record before. I think he's playing better this year than he has in the past. He's better than he was seasons ago when they finished with 8 and 8 mm-hmm. records. So, yeah, I think he is directly attributable to, to the majority of their wins, and that gives yes. him the MVP. The MVP is voted on at the end of the regular season. So I believe the votes have already been cast, and we just won't find out you know, until at the end of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But this might not be the only MVP they're fighting for this season. Because, bold prediction, I'm picking the Super Bowl to be Patriots-Falcons. What do you think about that? Um... It's, I, I think it's the most probable. Uh, I'll put it that I've said I'm skeptical of the Cowboys before because I don't trust two rookies, uh, Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott, to just go into the playoffs and, and know what they're doing. I mean, they've proven that they're good this year. Uh, the Cowboys have defied odds and, and they've done they've put together a really good regular season but when everything's on the line in one game and you're struggling the cowboys are gonna they're gonna have some times when they're struggling yeah. in the playoffs um it, it, with uh, going against an explosive offense such as the falcons um yeah I, I think the cowboys are gonna struggle even though uh they're the favorites to win the, the conference uh, so yeah i'll agree with you on your on your falcons Patriots right. pick. it's interesting I would like to say, I mean, obviously, the NFC race is going to be crazy. Yeah. Super Bowl Eli could go on a Super Bowl (laughs) Eli kind of run. Mm -hmm. But more probable than that even are the Seahawks doing something. uh, Are, you know, even the Packers doing something. The Cowboys doing something. I've heard a lot of people that are ruling out the Cowboys saying the road is too tough, which the road's really tough. It's tough. Like, it's going to be a really tough time. Potentially, you know, their first game likely to come either up against Aaron Rodgers or Eli Manning. Eli Manning and the Giants have already beat him twice. Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. You know, after that, they still got Russell Wilson. They still got Matt Ryan. Every quarterback in the NFC is a really good quarterback. 
in the playoffs. And yeah, and as much as I hate to say it, the only team I would rule out <laughs> for having a realistic path to the Super Bowl is the Detroit Lions. Probably. Uh, I mean, every other team. I mean, they either have experience that that proves they're capable. In the case of Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers, uh, Eli Manning as well. Uh, or they're just really, really the top. Those are. The bottom three teams, the top two, the Falcons and the um, the Falcons and the Cowboys, they don't have as much experience, but they're playing better. So I think each of those teams can make a case. Yeah, it's going to be really fun to watch. Um, I would give the tentative edge to the Falcons, but um, it, it'll be a good race to watch. Yeah, I like the Falcons just because I think they're going to have a much easier divisional round game, and that's thanks. That's crazy to say because yeah. you're going to say they're playing the Seahawks, right? Yeah, I mean most likely. So. It's interesting to say, I, but I think at home against the Seahawks, I really like the Falcons to win that game. Uh, and then that gets them to the conference championship, and then they're just, you know, one win away. Although I, I really want to make it clear that I don't want to count out the Cowboys by any means. They're the number one team in the league for a reason. They went 13-3 and three for a reason. And I mean, even 14-2 and two you could say if they didn't play Mark Sanchez Week 17 against right. the Eagles. Right. Uh, you know, I, there's people, you know, to name a few, Stephen A. Smith, Colin Coward, calling people out. <laughs> Saying there is no way the Cowboys make the Super Bowl, and that's just crazy to say for a number one seed, right? They, right? You know, they're two games away from the Super Bowl already, and they've put together the most impressive performance by two rookies that we've ever seen. They deserve credit and they deserve respect for their thirteen and three record. There's no question about that. Uh, this is the most impressive rookie duo we've ever seen ever. Yeah, uh, they have a, their running back led the league in rushing by. 300 plus <laughs> yards a rookie and, and he's yeah. 21 years old with the nfl it, by over 300 yards running rushing. behind the best offensive line yeah. in the nfl i mean obviously their defense is not their defense has shown up so i think you have got to at least give them the respect to say that they have a chance to make the super yeah. bowl obviously the they cowboys have a great chance when making the super bowl they have a you know just in terms of all the teams in the playoffs they have a pretty good chance of winning the super bowl I think the Falcons are a little more likely, but I think the Cowboys are, you know, right there with them. Uh, and then it was pretty easy for us to say Patriots. I think mm-hmm. everyone that's is really saying the Patriots are the favorites to come out of the AFC because they are. Uh, who is the team you think will give them the most trouble? Do you think it's going to be the Chiefs or the Steelers? Right. Uh, it's a good question. The Steelers are more uh, experienced. The Steelers have done it more. Um, I, I, th- I would go with the Chiefs, though, uh, just because they've, been explosive they've been tough um all season long yeah. uh, i like tyreek hill i love to talk about hill. like 60 plus I'm yards just watching that guy play is unbelievable <laughs> uh the speed is remarkable uh their defense i think is better than the yeah. steelers and that's important uh their and defense has, has literally won them a game against the falcons yeah. with a pick no six kidding. on a two-point conversion no uh alex smith is he's not I wouldn't put him on the same level as Ben Roethlisberger, but he's consistent. He's a really good game manager, and, and that's something yeah. that the that really fits into the Chiefs system. I know he hates the quote "game manager." I <laughs> say Alex Smith, the game manager. Yeah, well, he has to. It is what he's he a does. Good so game manager. He, he's good. He's good at that. If he doesn't like yep. that core, he, he's good at being a game manager. And I think so. That's what we're gonna label him as. Uh, it fits good with their system, and uh, they're consistent. And, and I, I think that gives them the best chance to upset yeah. the Patriots. And I'm gonna agree with you. I mean, primarily for two reasons. One, they have the first round by. One fewer game to get there. Okay. You know, uh, it'll take, only take them one game to you know reach the Patriots. So it'll take the Steelers two. And then if the Steelers win against the Dolphins, the Chiefs will play the Steelers at home. Right. You know, and that's going to be a you know, huge advantage for the Chiefs. So I will agree with you that the Chiefs are the biggest threats uh, in the AFC. And the Cowboys are the biggest threats to the Falcons. I can't believe we actually agreed. We don't usually <laughs> agree on things. <laughs> the right. Falcons are actually the favorites. But yeah. I guess we think they are. Uh, Cowboys and Falcons, the favorites over there. Patriots and uh, Chiefs, the favorites in the AFC. I mean, really, it's the one and two seats. It's what you'd expect, right? Unless you know, Super Bowl Eli. <laughs> and there's, te- I mean, the, the interesting thing with the NFC, there's there's five teams that could conceivably, realistically, make the Super Bowl. And I think in the and, AFC, and there's nobody's three. gonna. You can make a legitimate argument. Yeah, yeah there, there's and three I, in the AFC. And there, you could have said even more in the AFC, but you know, the fact is, you know, three AFC teams are not on their first quarterback, right. which is something that's crazy. Um, so yeah, I mean, so. Falcons and the Patriots are both our picks for the Super Bowl. Who do you think will win the Super Bowl? Patriots. Patriots. Yep. 
I think you'd be crazy to pick anyone besides the Patriots to win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this point, they're the clear favorites. Uh, when you mix the experience with the best record in the league, with like they're playing really good right now, they have Tom Brady, possibly the best quarterback ever, looking better than he ever has at age 38. Uh, it's, it's really impressive and fun to watch. All right. Uh, then I think that about does it. It's been a pleasure having you on the show again. Thanks for having me, Connor. Uh, and I guess we'll be right back again next week with uh, the divisional uh, divisional playoff predictions. Uh, until then, remember to check out toplevelsports.net for all my work and sports analysis. And uh, Connor and Michael signing off. See you guys.